Hey guys, as many of you know, we've been talking quite a lot about web browsers on this channel as of late, and mostly the focus has been around mostly Chrome and Firefox because they're the two big heavyweights in this arena. But a lot of you guys have been recommending other browsers. Uh, specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about Waterfox. Now, Waterfox is based on Mozilla Firefox, but it has a few tweaks and changes that many think improve it immeasurably. So uh, I'm gonna be sharing my experiences of using Waterfox as my primary browser for the last couple of weeks. So as you can see here, this is Waterfox 55.2.2 and the 64-bit version. Now, originally, back in the old days, Waterfox was effectively uh, made as a 64-bit web browser based on Firefox, and the emphasis was solely on speed. So as, as you can see here, I've got the About page up, but there is uh, About Waterfox. So yeah, it says here, Waterfox was started back in March of 2011 by myself, Alex Contos, a 16-year-old student. I had a fascination for the web and wanted to help expand on the ideas of what Mozilla had for a free and open web. And so I decided to make Waterfox a 64-bit browser based on Mozilla's free and open source platform. Waterfox was one of the first widely distributed 64-bit browsers on the web and quickly gained a loyal following. At the time, Waterfox had one thing in mind, speed, but now Waterfox also attempts to be an ethical, user-orientated browser. So, one of the many issues that people have had with Firefox as of late is that it actually does it isn't necessarily as private as it necessarily lets on. So one of, or some of the features that it uh, claims to have is that it disables a lot of the, uh, a lot of the features that Firefox have, which might be a risk to your personal privacy. And this can include everything from um, the telemetry, telem tele tele I'm having trouble with words today. Telemetry, telemetry. Two hours later. Telemetry, <clears throat> finally got that one out. Um, it removes pocket, it removes data collection, it removes things like startup profiling. Uh, it also disables encrypted media extensions for those of you that don't like those. Uh, and also it allows the running of all 64-bit NPAPI plugins. So if you're a fan of those, also it allows the running of unsigned extensions um, and the removal of things like sponsored tiles, um, as in a duplicate tab option, uh, locale selector in, in the general preferences. So it does tweak the um, the Firefox web browser considerably um, so that uh, it might be more appealing to people that value privacy or value free and open source software just a little bit more than your average Firefox user. But again, this is all down to personal preferences and personal software ethics. So uh, as I always say, you know, what, what I use or what other people decide to use, of course, isn't necessarily a soapbox to stand on, but rather just more options and, and more avenues to make an informed decision about the kind of software that we all use. So um, I've got to say, I've been using it now for quite some time, a couple of weeks, I think, and it does ring very true to Firefox. It seems very uh, Firefox-esque and um, it performs, I would say, about the same. I haven't seen a noticeable difference, um, but I think nowadays a lot of that's down to the fact that websites themselves just use so much memory and just uh, are so large in terms of file size that, that they are the governing factor in, in how, uh, how smooth your, your browsing experience is. Um, also, one thing about Firefox, which I do quite like, if you look at the search engines, uh, search engine options there, um, Ecosia search is the default option, and Ecosia is um, a sort of more uh, environmentally friendly search engine as well. So it uses its ad revenue to essentially plant trees, which I am a big fan of. I like trees. I live around enough of them, and they're important. So there. If you feel that Mozilla and Firefox have been going in the wrong direction as of late, but would would still like to utilize their software, then um, Waterfox is definitely um, a decent option to at least consider. And this is just a fine example of one of the benefits of open source software in general. But Waterfox is a grand example of the best of open source software, if you ask me. It takes existing code that people aren't entirely happy with, but without having too much of an impact or what, without having an impact on the original project or without having an influence on the original project can then grow and improve the code in its own way, making it more accessible and more useful
accessible to even more people. And I think that's a lot of what open source is about. It's this universality and inclusivity. And yeah, a lot of what um, Mozilla and Firefox have been doing as of late is certainly not going to be appealing to a significant number of people. But uh, as long as the source remains open, so do our options. So if you guys uh, would like an interesting and perhaps more ethical alternative to Mozilla Firefox, uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at Waterfox. So thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I know many of you guys uh, use it. Um, it's not available in the repositories of at least any of the Ubuntu distributions I've been on as of late, but it's easy enough just to download a binary that you can then just extract into a folder and then run um, pretty straightforwardly. There's no real complication. You just download the binary and run, really. So again, thanks very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.